touchdown, and the other came up a yard short. And the Argos look good on offense in the second half, and they're going to start a trick play. Reggie McDeal, the former quarterback, is intercepted, and Chris Thompson has his seventh of the year. Edmonton with three in the game, and he's finally angled out when it looked like he had a little room down the sidelines, but Chris Thompson has his seventh of the year. Well, this is one of the things that the Toronto Argonauts can do with Reggie McNeil. They can use him in more of wildcat formations, things like that. This isn't a wildcat formation. This is Cleo Lemon under center, but the deep pitch, so he can throw again, and he just doesn't see Chris Thompson, who is really playing in between two receivers and just playing that straight zone, dropping in the deep outside third of the field. And that's his seventh. At nine in 2008. Yeah, the safety was working out. And he helped Rod Davis into the end zone. Did he ever? There's Brad Lester. And Lester corralled as Kevin Ivan on the scene again. And for Kevin Ivan, that's seven tackles already on the afternoon. And 64 coming in, so he's over 70, which leads his football team. He has a couple of interceptions as well. Kevin Ivan is just a pure tackler. I mean, there are great blitzing linebackers, there are great covering linebackers, and then there's just great tacklers, and Kevin Ivan's a great tackler. So second and nine, they go to a six-pack of receivers. And looking right underneath, uh, Brad Smith for his second catch of the season. Former Argonaut, Brad Smith. Okay, I'll say it, from Queens. There you go. Nice catch, and he turns up, and, and it's the turn-up part, the part where he takes his football and doesn't dance around too much. He doesn't hesitate. Brad Smith is going to just run this little curl. And when he does, play extends. Ricky Ray hits him. Watch him turn up the field real quickly because he was about three yards short of a first down there until he turned up in there. I like the way you supply the extra color. <laughs> Try color in that case. First and goal, Ray. Rolling and he'll take it. And will be forced out at the five as Clemens gets a piece of a running Ricky Ray this afternoon yeah, here he in Moncton. Been. He has been. He's he's recognized quickly that the, the coverage is, is pretty good downfield. So when he sees that part of his games that is not talked about much, but he had a, a just shy of an eight-yard average coming in. He doesn't run a lot, but when he does, he picks up pretty good yards. <laughs> Eskimos are last in points off turnovers this year, trying to make that Thompson turnover a touchdown. And Ray into the end zone, and he's overthrew Jamaica Rector, and Willie Pyle has the interception. And the third big play of the game for Willie Pyle. Involved in three Argonaut takeaways, and he'll work the crowd here in this home game for Toronto. As Pyle and the Argo defense Snaps the Eskimo chance. Shop at Safeway. Jamaica Rector, I know this interception goes in the Ricky Ray column, but Jamaica Rector's going to bail on a route here. He gets jammed at the line of scrimmage and just sits down. He's supposed to run the corner route there. You can tell that's exactly where Ray wanted to throw it. The Eskimos have turned it over three times in the game. Willie Pyle has been instrumental on all three and now has four oh. interceptions on the year. Yeah, and I don't want to take anything away from the play by Pyle, but, but this is a receiver who gets jammed at the line, is supposed to run corner. Ricky Ray is throwing this football to a spot. When he gets jammed, he quits on the play, stops right there, sits down. Now that ball's already gone to that corner. Willie Pyle just flows over to it. Rick, Jamaica Rector just decided to make it up as he went along there. So second and eight for Cleo Levin, who steps up, up and he's got Reggie McNeil. And it's still loose, and Spencer Watt gets on it. <laughs> well, we've seen a little bit of everything in this game this afternoon. I mean, seen some fumbles, some forced fumbles. And little, some lobster fingers. I was going to say, a little bit of lobster butter, I think, on some of the fingers 
Reggie McNeil attacks it. We talked about that in the first half. He, he heads upfield, wasn't looking for the sideline at all, but just loses the handle. Elliot Richardson with his right elbow and forearm pops that ball out of there, and the Argos scramble to recover. Argos still with only six points, but just get the sense that this offense is starting to come around with Clay Lemon at the helm. First down. It's, it's a lot to get another Argonaut first down to the Edmonton 50. Elliot Richardson is a, a crowd favorite here, has made some plays, that big return before the half. I know he didn't get in the end zone. That was challenged and, and overturned, but cause fumble there and the Argos recover again. He's been close to some big, big plays, but he's getting involved. He's making an impact. So Spencer Watt with a fumble recovery and then a first down catch. Seventh Argo with the reception from Cleo Lemon. So he spread it around pretty well here this afternoon. First down. Jeff Johnson. And Jeff Johnson plows ahead for eight or nine more. What a dependable guy who waits for his turn, doesn't get it often, but without Corey Boyd, he gets a chance here again today, and he just seems to regularly deliver. Well, it was it was running by committee against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers with Corey Boyd out of the lineup, and Jeff Johnson led that committee with 62 yards last week against the Bombers, but the play he made at the end of the half is one of those great football plays that don't get talked about enough. Go, go, go! Back to Johnson this time, and Cleo Lemon takes off. And for the first down run. Pulled down by Larry Burdine, but the Argos are marching here in the third quarter. You know, and Jeff Johnson doesn't have the ball here, but he's the play fake guy. I want to go back and show you another small thing, a little fundamental of football. When you have play action fake here, and the quarterback's going to keep it, Johnson right here, he sells it. Like, he just doesn't let the ball touch his stomach and then look to the side. He sells it with his hands folded over like he's got the football. That buys some more time for Cleo Lemon. Good play at the drive. Jeff Johnson again. And he's down around the 22-yard line. Let me show you that disguise from a different angle and just show you what I'm talking about a little clearer. Here, here he comes. Now, watch the play action fake here. This is a small thing, but he's got his arms folded across his body like that just to sell it for a little bit more for the defense. They take one more step. That gives Cleo Lemon a little more room to the outside. Small things, little fundamentals that make a big difference. His hustle at the end of the half was huge, and he's showing you some of those fundamentals on every play. Andre Dury, Jeff Johnson, Ricky Foley, all graduates of the York football program. Intercepted. Jason Goss has got one. As the turnovers continue here, Rob Murphy will jolt him out, but this one it looks like the Argos had something going. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please give a big welcome to our Last weekend, he installed a rainwater collection system in his garden and a composter all by himself. Here's to smart choices and a job well done. Way to go, Carlo. Rona, doing it right. The cloudy jar with the faded label behind the baking soda? Not so streetwise. Negotiating with a vending machine? Not so streetwise. KFC snack boxes under $3? Now that's streetwise. Like tasty popcorn chicken and fries for the streetwise price of just $2.99. Enjoying the so good taste of KFC snack boxes whenever the hunger growl strikes? Very streetwise. KFC, so good. Your child could be the next Scotiabank kid captain to win an exclusive CFL experience that only Scotiabank can offer. A chance to step into the game with their CFL home team and be on field for the game coin toss at regular season or playoff home game. Or the grand prize, Scotiabank kid captain for Grey Cup 2010 in Edmonton. Step into the game at scotiakidcaptain.com. <laughs> 
The NFL action continues tonight with an AFC battle as the New York Jets travel to Miami to take on Cam Wake. And the Dolphins live coverage begins here on TSN 7 Eastern for Pacific. Of course, the Dolphins, Cleo Lemons, last team in the National Football League. Four consecutive offensive drives have ended with interceptions going back to the final play of the first half. Spencer Watt does a nice job route running. He, he comes on the inside. Now he's got to get inside position on Jason Goss here. That's a good move to shake him at the line. The ball is very catchable inside. He tips it up, gives Goss a second chance at it. The turnovers continue. And so we've been provided with evidence of why these two teams are ranked <laughs> seventh and eighth in offense this year. Yeah, pick the under in this one. <laughs> And a good run by the Vancouver area product. Kyle Cox, the left guard, is going to make a nice block here. He's he's open to start with on the play. In other words, he doesn't have a defensive lineman lined up in front of him. Watch him slide to the inside on Kevin Huntley and just get enough of him to open up that scene for Kelvin McCarty. Kelvin was just under 1,100 yards from scrimmage two years ago, but an injury plague season this year. Fred stamps the hitch. And Fred stamps not going anywhere. Denied by the veteran on the corner, Byron Parker. With all these interceptions, you you, you got to know that Byron Parker is, is he's chomping at the bit. He's saying, my turn's coming. Now, he's not going to make it on a play like this on these real short hitch passes. Those passes almost happen behind the line of scrimmage. But the way you stop them defensively, sure tackling. Byron, one of the many Argo veterans who is making his second trip to Atlanta, Canada, part of that preseason game five years ago against Hamilton in Halifax that ended in a 16 all tie. Ricky Ray wearing it out, stamps to the battle, incomplete as he was working there on the corner against Willie Middlebrooks. Millie, Willie Middlebrooks in perfect position and and turns so that he does not draw a pass interference call. A little bump there is fine. Now watch him turn, find the football, and then make sure first and foremost that Fred Stamps can't catch it. Willie Pyle almost had his fourth big play. So the Eskimos have to kick it away and we have yet to register any points in this third quarter. Prefontaine kicking it, and it bounces in front of Chad Owens with a flag down. And that's Will Harris out of USC downfield in a hurry to make the cover team play. Hey, Pete. Flag on the play. Hey, we will sort it out when we come back to Moncton. Well, it's been a treat to be here in Atlantic Canada where Elliot Richardson played his college football. Let's join Paul Hollingsworth. Well, Chris, you and Glenn earlier were discussing grassroots football in the Maritimes. In a big way, that issue is connected to Touchdown Atlantic. Back in the late 1990s, fewer than 1,000 combined players in all three provinces in the Maritimes were registered in minor football. That number today has grown to almost 10,000 combined in the Maritimes. New high school teams are popping up on a year-by-year -year basis. The crowds for those games are huge in some cases. And next year, in 2011, the CIS UTEC Bowl will be played here in Moncton. University organizers are hoping by bringing that game here they will future grow the sport in the future and maybe just maybe have university teams in Moncton and at UNB down the highway Chris at the UTech Bowl in 2011 2013 and 2015 for starters big Mount Allison win here yesterday over St. Mary's that shocked some people well, and complete intended for Anthony Allred and there have been some CFL football players that come from the region. You think of guys like Mike Washburn, a receiver for BC Montreal. Chris Skinner is from New Brunswick. Great Eskimo of the past. And how about your old 
teammate Stu Fraser. Yes, Stuart Fraser was a teammate of mine in Saskatchewan for seven years. He's from the area, and I, I know Jan Carinci has been a big part of the media here and hyping this game, and he is, of course, a former BC Lion. Gene Bellavo, a New Brunswick native who played for Montreal. Now a policeman here in the Moncton area. There's Tristan Jackson on the return. And he breaks a tackle and a good run by Tristan Jackson across midfield. Ricky Reyes, good field position when we come back. NHL on TSN preseason action continues Tuesday night, a doubleheader. First, it's the Sabres and the Senators at 7 o'clock Eastern. And following that, Calgary and the Phoenix Coyotes will meet 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. Ricky Ray back to work, a 20-yard Tristan Jackson return sets things up at the 50-yard line. That pass batted down. Big game for Willie Pilot, the safety for the Toronto Argonauts. He's made some big, big plays here this afternoon. In fact, turned the ball over three times, a forced fumble there. He also was crucial and made the big tackle on the short yardage play for Edmonton. That was a turnover on downs and also has his fourth interception of the campaign and his first in this game this afternoon. This is coming off the heels of an interception last week against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, so he's on a roll. So what you're saying, he's made the adjustment from linebacker to safety. And a huge impact on this game. Here's McCarty out of the backfield. Delvin McCarty will be stopped about a yard short of the first down, but uh, extra yard or two after contact to make it interesting. But Willie Piles had a, a splendid day at safety for the Argonauts. Yeah, and I, you know, I compare that transition, and you mentioned it, and I think it's a brilliant move by the Argonaut coaching staff to take him from linebacker and put him into a leadership role at safety where now he's calling the defenses he's getting a young secondary together and making those big plays and i compare it to when baron miles made that same transition bc lion is now coaching there but went from halfback started a corner moved into safety and really made a career of it in there really Powell can play for years at that spot there's a big gamble for the eskimos it's third and about a yard and a half to two short drop wasn't there and now And scored. Let's see if this is coming back. Willie Pyle was being blocked by Matthew Bertrand, and he's indicating.